What's up, everybody? This is your guy, Mike the Bike. And uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about one of my favorite games, uh, which goes by the name of Amori, as I am 100% sure you can tell from this presentation right here. So ignore the Google Slides. I'm just, you know, I've edited this very carefully. This is my beautiful presentation to you guys about Amori. If you haven't played Amori, uh, well, why don't we just go to the next um, seg segment? It's not a slide because I have I'm doing a lot of editing. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about in this you know little video thingy is about Amori. So first, I'm going to talk about what the hell it actually is. Um, second, why I like it, and three, why I personally like it. You know. So second is maybe, what are like the good parts of the game? Uh, what What is like, you know, objectively you can look at and you can be like, oh, this part is done well. You know, this thing that they do is nice. Um, and then the third is like, you know, my personal connection to it. So you get a little bit of, you know, that Mike the Bike special flavor into there or whatever. Um, yeah. So as you can see by, by the throwing up sticker on the right, um, there's not going to be a ton of spoilers in this game. I'm not going to spoil like any of the big plot beats or anything like that but i would say that if you want the best experience of this video i mean i have finished the game uh not all routes yet but i i know a lot about the game i would say at this point um so i would say you know maybe try to get part way through it you know if you have the game definitely get through a little bit of it you know get into the story and the lore and whatever and uh, play through it enough to kind of get a sense of this and then you can sort of relate more to why I like it but if you're completely new that's totally fine um, but I would say maybe if you do plan on playing it maybe wait until you have played a bit um, sometime down the road and then check come back to this video but you know all viewership is appreciated got to get that non-existent ad revenue okay anyways why don't we just get started so first part uh, section one, WTF is Amori, uh, my beautiful section title. So this is going to be the Amori, Amori Wikipedia entry, since I'm sure Wikipedia is smarter than I am. Amori, stylized as Amori, is a 2020 role-playing video game developed and published by indie studio Omocat, uh, pictured in this cat that is like the avatar representation of the creator. In the story, the player controls a Hikikomori boy. Hikikomori, basically meaning like shut in, uh, it's a Japanese term, and it's sort of like a thing over there, and people have picked up on it, and it's sort of become, uh, you know, more used to describe people who are shut ins or like don't leave their houses and things like that. Okay, anyways, uh, a Hikikomori boy named Sunny and his dream world alter ego Amori. They explore both the real world and a surreal dream world to overcome their fears and secrets. How they interact depends on choices made by the player, resulting in one of several endings. The game's turn-based battle system includes unconventional status effects based on the character's emotions. Prominently featuring concepts such as anxiety, depression, and trauma, the game has psychological horror elements. Okay, so, you know, that's the overview. It's basically an RPG, it's a role-playing game, um, and you're sort of going around this world, interacting with NPCs, and making some choices, doing battles, etc, etc. There's boss fights, there's adventure, there's puzzles and stuff like that. So, yeah, and you know, it's available on Switch, PC, other, other consoles, probably, maybe, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so, why don't, we, why don't we talk about the gameplay first, and WTF is more first part of the gameplay is running around um, so it's like the open world that you can see like this you go from zone to zone um, you interact with NPCs such as this fruit here um, and you know you have your merry band of adventurers along with you very classic RPG stuff and then you know you have the combat system so as you can see you have your party uh, in the in the in the four corners of this image in the bottom left um, and then you're fighting usually an enemy who's placed in the center and there's like cool background art 
hand-drawn kind of vibe of stuff, you know. It's real cool. It's real cool. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but that's kind of like the two main parts of the gameplay. It's the, you know, adventuring, going around, and then battle or combat. Um, and I guess like the decision-making parts usually go in around um, the, the first section, you know, the adventuring part. Um, I know people compare this. Okay, I'll we'll talk about this in just a hot second. Uh, cause you know, there are other similar games. Oh, gotta get this guy in here. Uh, there are other similar games to Amori. You know, that's not really anything crazy. You know, the creator Omocat has referenced other games such as Earthbound and stuff like that. Um, very much inspired by these old classic RPGs like Earthbound, Yume Niki, uh, apologies for the pronunciation, I'm a buffoon, um, and of course, you know, maybe not necessarily inspired by, but um, definitely is in the same vein as a game like Undertale in terms of its, you know, combat. There is a adventure part and there's like an open world sort of thing. I mean, not really open world, but you got what I mean. Like you're walking around in some zones um, and then there's a combat portion. So in that sense, it is similar to Undertale, yes. Um, which is probably the game that it would draw most comparisons to if you talk to the average gamer. Um, but yeah, uh, there's no Sans actually. I just put that in there because I thought it was, would be funny to use the Smash Bros. Uh, Sans me. Anyways. Okay, so it has these elements. You kind of get what Amori's about. It has some, it has some like psychological horror stuff as you've probably heard. Um, but why do people like it? I'm saying I, you know, air quotes around that I, but why do people like it in general? So here we see our main lively bunch of characters. Um, credit to Omo Cat, as you can see. And why are these characters good? Uh, not morally, of course, but, you know, good. So what's good about these characters is that they're interesting and that they, most of them, most of them kind of suck. Um, a lot of them kind of suck. A lot of them are, you know, pretty realistic in that they're not great people, per se. Um, and, you know, each one of them has a very distinct personality. Even a lot of the NPCs and bosses and stuff, they're really, really memorable, you know. Like, you can't go through Sweetheart's Castle without meeting some very, very interesting uh, experiences, you know, in puzzles and combat and all of that good stuff. Um... You know, some bears come to mind specifically, a certain donut, um, maybe you, you end a bloodline inside of a castle. Anyways, there's a lot of different, very interesting characters, um, and it's, you know, getting attached to these characters, following their story as you play over you know, like 20 plus hours of gameplay uh, to finish one run, one, one run of the game. Um, it, makes the, it makes it feel very engaging. Because you can sort of get drawn into these characters, you know, some relatable, some not so much. Uh, but all of them have an impact on the story in some sense. And especially our main cast, you know, the, the game has been in development for many years um, before its release. Of course, you know, these characters are going to have fleshed out, like, desires, motivations, reasons for what doing what they do. All this stuff. Even if those reasons aren't totally, you know, correct, they still have reasons why they do them. And of course, they're fun. They're memeable. Yay. You know, Kel's ballin'. Basil's, uh, you know, a flower. Sunny. Edgelord. Aubrey Girl Boss. Etc. 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 You know, you see all these different comparisons people make. But uh, there is some validity to them, you know. Obviously, the creators of the game are not 90 year old Stonehenge fossils or anything like that. They know these different character tropes and archetypes, and some of them, you know, fit them pretty pretty down the line. A lot of them are more nuanced than what they might originally seem based on their tropes or whatever. Um, and of course, you know, you finish the game, you walk away just remembering definitely these main characters and of course a lot more. Um, they just, they just kind of stick with you because of the game. Um, putting so much time into uh, during the like adventure sections, making you interact with a lot of other characters and really getting to know them a lot better. And the story, of course, you know, okay, this might be 
mostly spoilerless, but if there are some elements of spoiling here, maybe click ahead off of this slide, maybe, I don't know. Um, but you know, there's a lot of different parts of the story, so I obviously can't cover them all. But uh, I will say that, you know, it does get kind of crazy. Uh, there are some elements of the story that are shocking or surprising or fun or crazy or sad. And, you know, that's just, you know, like with any story. But with Amori, you know, because you it's, it's a video game and then you keep going through these different beats of the story in different sessions over different days, you know, there's a lot of time to let these hard-hitting moments sink in. And of course, I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard, if you are interested in Amori, that there are multiple endings, and yes, that is true. But, you know, important to note that the ending of the game kind of makes sense, or, you know, based on what actions you've taken during the course of the game, the ending you get will reflect that. And, you know, yeah, makes sense, I guess. Uh, your ending is based on what you do. Uh, and, of course, there's a lot of different settings, very dynamic. Um, there's, you know, towns, there's arenas, there's uh, laboratories, factories, whatever. You know, you can imagine, you see all these different images over to the, to the left-hand side. It's a great a little collage thing, I think, created by Omoket um, himself. Uh, and it's just, you know, a lot of color, dynamic, etc. I'm not an artist, but damn. It's fun, just, you know, going through the story and inter and living it out, kind of, as uh, as the game goes on. The art, man, the art is baller in this game. There's a ton of art. Omocat themselves, you know, is an artist, and they, they, they do the arts. They do the arts. Um, uh, the battle screens, you know, uh, this is bottom left is actually part of the battle screen, I think. Oh, actually, I don't remember, but you know, the battle screens, there's real world concept, there's real, 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 real world photos. So, in the bottom left photo, you can see the background there, it's like an actual photograph, right? Um, it's really interestingly incorporated and it's pretty funny at some points. Um, there's so much concept art. If you look up like a Mori concept art, you can just see a million different iterations of these different characters doing awesome you know hilarious poses or inter like you can see alternate versions of the characters that ultimately didn't make it into the game and you can sort of figure out you know why did this iteration of the character not end up making it into the game why did you know why did the appearance change why did the personality or the plot beats change it's very interesting so yeah overall i mean just like the art itself is baller you know you get a shirt you get a poster like this top right one there's a poster of it available in the homo cat shop haven't gotten it but will not be opposed to getting it because it is a fire um music also you know the artistic uh, from an artistic point of view the art you know the the actual drawing and you know a visual portion of the game along with the music coupled together it's just you know very aesthetically pleasing very dope and it, just makes the game a lot more colorful literally um and of course you know the music not all of them are hits i will say but uh, i'm sure you will find some pieces that you really enjoy from the ost there's like over 150 tracks you know uh there's like i don't know exactly the number but i think between like 150 and 200 tracks um you have different portions of the game and different panel sections and different zones you can imagine a lot of work was put into composing all of this art and creating all this music. And it shows, man. Uh, what we're listening to in the background is actually a remix of Thrifted Tchotchkes. Um, I will link it in the description so you can just go check it out yourself. A very fun remix, I will say. Very dope. The world. Okay. Man, I'm going to talk about a couple different parts of the world in this section. So buckle up your shoelaces that's not a, the, a real saying but you know okay so symbolism the symbolism is nutter butter in this game you know it's everywhere you could there you uh, the game has a lot of different endings right you can replay it multiple times but still find new things in each playthrough uh, pretty gnarly pretty pretty gnarly um, I will say like you know basically all of these images here have some sort of 
uh, symbolism or some connection to the plot of the game or some sort of significance if you need clarification let me know because i will happily talk about any of these images with you uh because i love this game and you know the map itself also um aside from any sort of like you know references that i may or may not have regarding how big it is okay i'll say some zones you know they feel pointless but you know if you have to go through all these fights over and over again eventually it's just going to sort of become not mind numbing and maybe that's a low point but anyways yeah the map is really big there's a lot of stuff to explore and if you are doing your first playthrough it's just so great to get lost in this huge like vast expanse of a world uh i would say maybe com compare it to hollow knight in that sort of sense hollow knight is a game where I mean, I personally have a story of Hollow Knight where I spent like three hours in the first zone um, and I was sort of like lost and aimlessly wandering around, backtracking and retracing my steps and getting lost and not knowing how to use the map or whatever. And uh, uh, I've watched a speed run of the game and they completed the entire thing, which took me like 30, 20 hours maybe. I, I don't remember quite how long. They completed that entire thing in 30 minutes and they spent like minutes traversing the same huge zone that i i had spent three hours on. okay anyways you can sort of like just get lost in this world it's very immersive very fun there's just so much to do so much to see so many things and new sites to 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 delve into it's great um and you know what the, the thing i like most about the game is that it's unique it doesn't feel like undertale or like these other games that people compare it to it's got this sort of distinct sense of, you know, quirkiness, uh, people might say, but it's also, you know, it has that artistic touch, sort of this, it has, it has high highs, low lows, you know, you feel happy, you feel sad, you feel fulfilled, you feel empty, all of these different things, you know, Amori hits you with a lot of it. Okay, I mean, I talked about that a lot. You know, I mentioned why I liked it because, you know, it has a lot of these good elements. But why do I specifically like this game? And I will tell you, part of it has to do with my gamer tag. As you all know, I am an epic gamer. And so I have a gamer tag that I created like ten, uh, not 10 years ago. Oh my god, almost 10 years ago. Um, that is Sunny. Um, S-U-N-N-Y, and I, I've used, like, variations of this sort of name, you know, Sunny the Bot, Sunny Shrooms, etc., etc., um, but, like, Sunny, you know, I mean, I wanted a name that reflected my disposition, and I thought, you know, it's, like, a happy-sounding name, yay, um, fun, yay, awesome, so I chose Sunny, uh, I did not know that there were real human beings called Sunny at the time. I'm so sorry to everybody called Sunny, uh, but that is the, the gamer tag I chose. Oh. And so, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I name my character Sunny when I play, like, RPGs and stuff, you know? Um, if I have, if I'm doing, like, a character creation thing, I, like, you know, do the parents randomly, and then I give them a name, I'm like, Sunny, Sunny Assassin, or, like, Sunny Mage, or, like, Sunny warrior or whatever based on whichever class i'm playing in like the rpg and stuff but for this one you know it's like name your character i'm like okay sunny uh, i just put it in and then you know i play through the game and then i finished the i finished the entire game like 30 hours worth of content you know just going through with my guy called sunny and then you know the, okay like this this little this little dude to the right i finished the entire game and then I go to the wiki to look at like some alternate endings or whatever, to look at some things that I didn't, you know, quite completely understand and just like, you know, getting any clarification for the stuff. And I look at the wiki and the guy is called Sunny. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. You know, like I played Doki Doki Literature Club and these other games that read your like Steam username and stuff, or I don't know if Steam username, some username or whatever on your, on your files. And I'm like, oh, cool. They finally implemented it. So, like, this wiki, it reads my gamer tag somehow. And I'm like, that's why it's called Sunny. Wow, that's, you know, we live in, we live in 2020. Uh, we live in the future. Uh, 
And I just like, I browsed the wiki for like half an hour, you know? I was crying a little bit because I finished the game. And then I, I'm like, dude, wait, are all of these pages referencing Sunny? And I, and I go on to some communities. I check out like, you know, reddit.com uh, slash r slash amori and everything. And then I type in like Sunny and I'm like, dude, why the hell are these people calling them Sunny? Like, is that, am I, am I getting pranked or something here? And then I, I read into it. And the dude is literally called Sonny. Like, that's it. His name is Sonny. Like, what are the odds of that? And so I was like, oh my god. This game is, like, made for me, dude. My gamer tag is Sonny. The gamer in the game is Sunny. Like, oh, dude, I, my, let me tell you, my mind was just blown after seeing that. So that's, like, my Sonny story. I was like, oh my god, this game is perfect, dude. Uh... So that was just that, that was that was a mind blowing experience, honestly. I thought I was getting pranked by the entire internet. Uh, they were just calling this dude Sunny, and I was like, "What the hell? Stop copying me!" Uh, but turns out I was the copycat all along. Anyways, uh, let me just tell you, I cried a couple times during this game. You know, uh, spoiler slash not spoiler. You know, behind a church during a particular song walking down a lane and you know at the end of course finishing a game um those are times when i'm pretty sure i cried uh for, for these ones i'm pretty confident i cried during these times other times maybe who knows now if you're not a crier i will guarantee you you might get you will, you will get sentimental during these portions of the game again if you need clarifications as to what these sections of the game are let me know, uh, and I will happily provide that information, but man, man, oh my god, dude, I'm telling you, uh, if you get very easily frightened, uh, I mean, the game isn't actually, like, super horror-based, so you'll probably be okay, or maybe just, uh, play with somebody in a call with you, that could be a good idea, um, but, you know, there are some horror elements, there are a lot of sad elements definitely um so if you get usually emotional just have it have some tissues on standby you know um and i'm you know i'm just telling you man this game there's a lot of feels there's a lot of feels and you know especially like i mentioned before because the game you get a lot of downtime in between sessions to reflect on what's happening in the story Be, it can be a lot of reflection, man. I'll just, I'll, I'll just say that. I'll just say that. So, in conclusion, uh, I still have a couple more thoughts after this conclusion portion, just because it's like my last slide or whatever. Uh, I heckin' love Amori. You should play it. I 100% recommend. Worth the money. If you have played it and you would like to discuss, hit me up, because I'm always ready to, to talk Amori. Um, and I would just say. Uh, a couple of pointers for playing the game. Uh, playing, alo playing it alone can be good, but I would really recommend, you know, playing maybe some of the scarier sections, especially if it's your first time uh, with this sort of game. Playing the scarier sections with somebody else, like in a call, in the room with you, just like be in the presence of another person because it makes it a lot easier to digest. I will tell you, uh, what, one of my friends played it recommended it to me um and you know he did want people in a call with him during scary sections i wanted people in a call with me during scary sections um if you can get someone with in real life imagine that imagine that gamers uh, if you need somebody in real life to be doing it with you please do it's, it, it should be a lot of fun maybe you can alternate you know doing the adventuring and combat phases and stuff i don't know um it's a game that can be enjoyed with friends. Yeah, that's that's definitely what I'll say. Um, I would recommend doing multiple playthroughs. I personally have done like one and a half playthroughs. Uh, you know, I'm coming out, I'm fessing up. I haven't had a, t like a million year hours of experience with Amori, but I mega love the game. Um, uh, so I would say try and get through some of the other endings. You know, maybe you can, you can use some save states and stuff like that. Uh, but just see what the other endings are, because they are quite interesting. 
one thing I will say though, I know you're watching, you watched this video a bit long enough, you know, probably for too long, uh, but if you can at all try to go into the game without being spoiled, like, my friend played through the game a decent amount, but didn't really hit the huge story beats, um, and I was like, you know what, this game just sounds good enough that I really want to get it, so I got it, like, um, it released in, like, December 2020, I want to say, some, sometime more like that, um, and I played it in, like, January 2020, or, 2021 like i don't remember the exact timeline but basically like a month after release and i wasn't really keeping up with any of the community stuff i wasn't really getting spoiled so i played through the game and i was like it was like in a couple days actually like i finished it oh, i played i played so much of it during a short period of time maybe i burned it too fast anyways i would i was like completely unspoiled mostly unspoiled and let me tell you the game Feel, felt so incredible you know just learning all of this stuff for the first time wow wow that was amazing so if at all possible please do not spoil yourself uh any more than necessary to understand what's going on maybe uh don't look at the wiki don't look at the community stuff please um yeah if people love to spoil this game maybe i've spoiled too much <laughs> i don't know but you know, at this point, you're in it. You know too much. Now you have to play it. Uh, so I guess now's a good time as any to basically just wrap this wrap this thing up. Um, so that was basically my thoughts on Amori. I think I hit most of my thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm bound to have a couple more, but if necessary, I may make follow-ups. Who knows? Um, but you can just tell how excited I am. Oh my gosh, this game is great. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, play it. If you play it, tell me. It's gonna be lit. Um, and otherwise, if you don't play it, never talk to me. I'm just kidding. Uh, if you don't play it, that's totally fine. Um, there are some, like, playthroughs and stuff on YouTube. Uh, I didn't record mine, of course. I know you're so sad about that. Wow. Uh, but there's like some pretty good ones on YouTube. Uh, again, it's really good to explore the world yourself and get to, you know, you get to choose where you want to explore and what you want to check out and what you want to, you know, maybe not check out because it's very tedious. Um, so above all, would recommend playing the game, but if you can, totally some good like Let's Plays or whatever on YouTube that you can check out. Um, I would say there's like a lot of more analysis videos, you know, I uh, Maybe this counts as one, but some of those are pretty good, some of those are not, but I would also say that, you know, the community stuff is always really good. There's a lot of fan art, a lot of, like, fan animations, music videos, and stuff like that. Maybe give those a try if you finish the game, because this is going to be pretty good. Anyways, I'll, I'll be linking the music down below. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link the, the Steam page, I guess, for Amori if you want to play it. Uh, if you have a console, you can maybe check that out, too. But anyways, it has been a pleasure discussing Amori into my microphone. Uh, maybe people will hear it, maybe, maybe they'll not. But anyways, have a great day or night or any in, anything in between that or outside of that. Uh, and yeah, it's a Morbin time. <laughs>